the mathematical concept of circulation, introduced in connection with vorticity in our second film, is also useful in analyzing the cross thrust that is exerted upon certain bodies in relative motion. The circulation gamma is defined as the line integral of the tangential component of the velocity completely around a closed curve. It's thus a measure of the tendency of the fluid to circulate around the curve, either in the one direction or in the other. The circular streamlines of an irrotational vortex are all lines of constant circulation, for the velocity varies inversely and the circumference directly with the radius. Now, if the velocity field of such a vortex is superposed upon the velocity field of irrotational flow around a body, say a circular cylinder, the velocity on the one side will be augmented and on the other side diminished in proportion to the relative strength of the circulation. And the flow pattern will change accordingly. Where the velocity is increased, the pressure will be reduced and vice versa so that a side thrust will be exerted upon the cylinder. Such circulation can be produced in actuality by boundary layer shear around a rotating body. This is illustrated quite graphically by rolling a light paper cylinder down a miniature sea jump. Because of the rotation of the cylinder, as it leaves the jump, the cross thrust will cause it to deviate quite markedly from its normal parabolic trajectory. The same effect causes the deflection of a spinning baseball or a spinning ping pong ball from its normal course. If the cylinder is not rotating, however, oscillation of the float pattern will cause the circulation to vary first in one direction and then in the other, with the result that there is a rapid oscillation in the cross thrust. This explains the tendency for telephone wires to sing in a high wind. Or it explains the whistling sound that is given off by this rod as it swung rapidly through the air. Observation of the flow pattern behind such a cylinder will reveal the alternate shedding of vortices either side of the center line. The circulation around each vortex being just the opposite of the momentary circulation around the cylinder producing the side thrust. The succession of such vortices is called the Kármán vortex trail. If the cylinder is free to oscillate under the side thrust, as it is if suspended from light springs, it will gradually develop an oscillatory motion in the transverse direction and eventually move back and forth over a distance about equal to its diameter. An elliptical cylinder with major axis in the direction of the flow will have a more limited amplitude of oscillation, whereas one with its major axis normal to the flow will oscillate much more markedly. Some asymmetric forms, like either this semicircular cylinder or ice-encrusted telephone wires are unstable in that they will tend to oscillate farther and farther with eventual breakage of the suspension as a result. A similar sort of instability is found in various structural sections. In particular, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge here seen oscillating in a high wind prior to ultimate failure. A body that is so designed as to take maximum advantage of flow-induced cross-thrust is known as a lifting vane. The circulation of the starting vortex, seen here, is matched by an equal and opposite lift-producing circulation around the foil. The fact that circulation actually occurs around the foil is seen from the vortices that detach as the foil is stopped. 